Hey everybody, I'm going to talk to you about some things that you need to keep in mind, especially when trying to purchase a music instrument such as a quattro. And, well, it's, it's something which is very important because it's not really a, an instrument which is readily or easily accessible. There, there are some options which you can find through Amazon, and there's many, many different kinds of uh, fabricators of, um, of instruments which are posting their, uh, their products. On, uh, on the internet, particularly through Facebook or, or through YouTube. But there's some key elements that you need to be aware of before uh, purchasing an instrument. A lot of people are not entirely sure what it is that you should look for. And, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you not only through uh, prefabricated quattro, so ones which are mass produced in, uh, in factories, but also what it is that you can look for in, uh, in quattros that have been purchased or that, that, have, been, uh, that have been made through Nutieres, so that's something which is very important to know not only the differences but what to look for and uh, these are different kinds of experiences all together which I'm going to be sharing with you not only for myself personally but also from our customers uh, from our Lutieres and from our Cuatrices themselves so uh, these are some, some very important tips to, to keep in mind whenever purchasing a musical instrument and, uh, and let's, let's go ahead and get started with the comparisons and, um, and, and some of the things, some of the key features that you should be aware of. <clears throat> what I have here, this is a prefabricated quattro. This one is from Estado Lara, so it, it is from a, a region which is known for making instruments. As you can see, it's, it's, quite a, uh, it's quite a beautiful instrument. It has all the details, all of the different kinds of, of, uh, of markings and attributes of a quattro, specifically this uh, grin that the fingerboard makes, that is the, the typical uh, or the, the key element in the cuatro. It's, it's something which is used in, in Spanish, it's the golpeador. It's the fingerboard right over here. And it's, this part, it's, it's very important for it to be reinforced. Um, and well, we'll get into a little bit more details on what it is you should look for when it comes to, to this part. But this is a prefabricated one. And the, the way that you can tell is because the, the finishing of the vernier, it's, as you can see, it's, it reflects quite, quite a lot. Um, I'm going to show you a part of it. Let's see if we can see it in the video. I'm going to show you a part which, let's see, right there. Right where the light is glaring, you can see a little bit of a difference. It's not all too apparent right there. You may be able to see it a little bit better. It's, it's basically, uh, this instrument, it appears to have been painted in a very sloppy way, uh, as if whoever was, was fabricating it was, uh, was in a hurry. And the, 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 the actual vernier which is put on it, the quality of it is good. It's very strong, which is very important because you want to avoid the, the, the wood being, and being damaged in any sort of way, shape, or form. Um, another thing to take notice of is that the, the finishing within the inside, over here it's a little bit difficult to see, but the finishing inside is a little bit uh, poor. Um, nevertheless, this happens to be a high-end or a very uh, good quality of a fabricated instrument, so don't be put off by this. The wood that is used over here is rosewood and it's, it's a very good quality. Um, the, the frets themselves, they are... Uh, some luthieres they, they paint it, others polish it, so it really depends on, on your preference. I have one which happens to be polished, which I'll show you in a moment. But you're able to see the, the glare from, from the paint, from the veneer. And this part, it's also rather, uh, rather important because it gives you some good protection. But over, over time, uh, you'll see that it'll start to chip. So those are, those are things which, uh, which you need to be aware of. The fretboard has to be very well reinforced. The reason for it is because as you're strumming, uh, you may see on some professional quatrices that this is the part which takes the most wear and tear. So the better protected that this is, then the uh, the, the the longer it's going to last. Um, there are many persons who would need to uh, get their quatros repaired, but that's that's nothing that you can see. I've had this one for approximately three years, playing every day. And, uh, and it does have some wear and tear over here from when well, someone dropped it, but other than that, it's in good condition. And this quattro itself, it has 17 frets. Uh, it's recommendable for you to also consider a quattro which has 17 frets because of the extent or where it is that you are able to, 
to get. Um, when I what I mean by that is from the twelfth fret. So here's eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. From this fret downwards, everything starts again in the sense of you can use the same figure of D major as over here. So from twelve frets onwards, you're going to be able to well uh, replicate the sound, uh, but in in another octave. <clears throat> and on most quadrilles, they'll have 15 frets, so we'll have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It'll arrive to right around here, so you're going to be running out of space. Uh, the, the distance between the, the metal frets, that's something which becomes smaller when you have less of them. And, uh, and I happen to have a quattro over here with 15 frets, which I'm going to pull out. You're going to be able to have take a look at the difference between the length. You see the the actual head of this one appears out of the camera, whereas this one is still visible. When you get down to this part, it's uh, the distance between the frets is pretty similar. However, uh, there are less on this cuatro, so uh, you'll you'll be able to at a certain point in time you'll you'll not be able to to go any any further unless you try to play on the fingerboard itself. Um, you may notice already when comparing these two cuatros that this one it's it has the appearance of being a little bit more professional. This one happens to be a luthier made cuatro, which uh, I'll be able to tell you what the differences are um, in a moment. But so you can tell that they have the same attributes, so the same ring around the sound hole, and also the same uh, fingerboard of a different wood very important especially because it needs to be reinforced now let's let's take a closer look at this one this one it has uh, a specific kind of fingerboard and a lot of luthiers they tend to do this because it gives them their their signature the sound holes are also uh, an element which they may be able to do something artistic with you may have seen some beautiful quadros from Jorge Bol or from uh, Alfonso Sandoval that, have, that make use of the, the sound hole to, to give it a, a very artistic look and they, they produce some magnificent pieces. This, this quattro in particular, it's, uh, this is uh, Palo Santo and, uh, and Abeto, so those are different kinds of, of wood. This wood is from India. It's, uh, it's, uh, it gives it a beautiful acoustic, so it sounds, sounds absolutely marvelous. And what you can tell uh, closely with this instrument is the amount of detail which is being put into it. The the bridge, so it's this part over here, is made with a different wood. This one happens to be made of ebony, and the neck is also made of ebony. And it does not shine as as much as the other one because this one has been polished. It has not been painted, and uh, it it's actually gives a very warm feeling, warm touch to to the fingers. So. It's uh, it's something that you'll uh, you'll learn to appreciate as you start to compare instruments uh, on your own. Another part which uh, needs to be kept in mind is there there's different kinds of heads. This one over here, you can see the the actual uh, one one of the parts of the logos of uh, this luthier, which is Jose Barito. Uh, he he places it on the neck or on the on the head. I beg your pardon. And the amount of detail which is given to and quality as well to the the, the actual well uh, to to every element of the instrument they're simply phenomenal yeah. so the the tuning pegs are are made of uh, of stone and there's it's just a, a great work of art and there are many luthieres that can produce instruments such as this you have to be able to get it for the right price as well and uh, they need to be trustworthy which is, I will touch upon in a moment um, I will compare this cuatro now, not in terms of sound, the sound quality as far as they go, it's very similar. This one, the the one that I was showing you earlier, so this one, although it is prefabricated, it has a marvelous sound to it. So a high-end prefabricated instrument, so outstanding, outstanding instrument. Um, this one has also another particular uh, element, which is that the the actual um, the diapason, so the fingerboard, it's a lot, or the, the fretboard, I beg your pardon, it's a lot thinner, and that means that your reach 
is, I mean, look at that, I can basically uh, go <laughs> over half of the, the, the entire fretboard, so your reach becomes a lot further when this part is thinner. That's something particular to this luthier, he fabricates it like this. Others, they, they try to maintain a standard, so the standard type of of, uh, of quattro thickness, but this is something which uh, different luthiers, they, they tend to, to start to experiment with. This one is 15 frets. It's an outstanding instrument. Um, great detail. Uh, fantastic woods as well. Smell the veneer. With the veneer, you have to be very careful with how it is that you're going to be keeping the quattro. I'm going to talk to you about that in a moment. You can use uh, a stand or well, this one that you can see behind me is hanging on some hooks. But pay close attention and ask Luthier what kind of, or what, what they would recommend on, uh, on how it is to store your quattro. Because with this one in particular, if I were to hang it like the one in the back, then the, the veneer is, it, it does give some wear to it. And, and that's exactly what we don't want when, when looking for, for a quattro. Uh, so we would, I simply store this one in a case, and store it in a different way. I can also put it on a basic uh, guitar stand or use a string instrument stand. Those are, those are great ways on, on how it is that you can go ahead and, and store your instrument. I'm going to compare this one now, which has been made by Luthier, to this one over here. This quattro was made by uh, Jose Leonard, Leonardo, I beg your pardon, he is uh, in Venezuela. He lives in San Fernando de Apure, also a region which is very known. And one of the one of the key things is that you can tell uh, the, the the fingerboard on this one, so the, the entire upper part of a quattro is smaller than this one. It's a little bit petite. It's not all too much of a problem, it's simply a, a style uh, matter. You can tell that both of them have some excellent detail. You know. And... Um, one of the th key elements when considering a quattro from a luthier is you have to be able to trust the individual with whom you are working with. Jose Barito is a uh, luthier who happens to use modern technology. When I mean modern technology, I mean he uses uh, WhatsApp, just to name a few uh, other things, to keep his customers updated with the process of the fabrication of the instrument. Typical fabrication time takes between three to four months. Uh, depending upon how the luthier is, uh, is working on the instrument. And to give a good comparison between these two, Jose Barito, with uh, pictures provided uh, to me then through WhatsApp and to other customers, would take three months. And this individual, so uh, Jose Leonardo, he took almost a year to finish this music instrument. And uh, I had absolutely no updates whatsoever. I had to continue to call, and it wasn't a particularly good experience when you're when you're spending um, a quite a bit of money on not only the fabrication of the instrument but also on uh, on the phone calls and just chasing it down and it took approximately two months for it just to be uh, <laughs> shipped over so just the shipping uh, let alone the the actual delivery and that's another uh, key element so back to back to the trust um, with tu cuatro we at least try to uh, we have a trial with each and every single one of our luthiers before we make a purchase, before we even start to offer their services uh, through our website. So every luthier that has been with us goes through a trial. They fabricate an instrument and we evaluate how it is the, the customer experience because we are the customers. Um, now, let me put this one away, just over here. Now, <clears throat> that is is key because we, of course, do not want to be offering those services, which should be a privileged service to someone uh, either in, in, uh, in Europe or outside of Europe. So it's, it's something of, uh, of utmost importance to keep in mind that whatever it is that we offer, we've been there, we've done it, we have approved or have been satisfied with the customer experience. So that's something that, uh, that needs to be kept in mind with the Lutieras that you find on, uh, on our site. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that all other luthieres or all other persons who are offering instruments are not good, but just keep in mind um, that uh, knowing, having a lot of knowledge and having been through a lot of luthieres with different kinds of situations, it's, there's nothing like knowing that you're in good hands, not only in terms of the guarantee of the instrument, 
but also in in terms of well the the the, the entire experience of knowing that it's being made and knowing that you're being updated on the process so that's that's something which is very reassuring um, this this cuatro it's um, also made with a very beautiful type of wood it's a red wood it's also a type of uh, rosewood and it's been polished so the fretboard has been polished very very nice now this instrument came from Venezuela uh, the Jose Barito instrument, that one had come from Spain. So one of the main things that you have to keep in mind here is, well, where is the instrument actually coming from? Because how is it that they're going to be treated through customs? And I must say I was very unfortunate with this one because the entire experience, not only with the Luthier, wasn't so great, but also with the, uh, <laughs> the customs persons. If you have a look right over here, you can see a hole. You can actually see my black shirt, and then my uh, there. You can see the hole clear as day right through the cuatro. Unfortunately, the national guard did not um, appreciate the fact that an instrument was going out of the country. They were probably searching for contraband while they were at it, and uh, and unfortunately, I paid the price with this instrument being well violated, for lack of a better word. It also has a hole right over here. It's a little bit difficult to see. Um, because that's uh, made of ebony, uh, there you see it. And at the bottom, it used to have, well, it, uh, it used to have one of these pegs where you can put a strap onto it, and that was also drilled through, unfortunately. So this one, as a customer, not only did I have to pay uh, customs in uh, in Europe for it because it was coming from abroad, but it was also uh, essentially destroyed. I can still play with it, but it was essentially destroyed uh, during the process of, of coming out. Uh, along with it, it were, there was a beautiful case, which was handmade, and that was also completely ripped apart, torn to pieces. So uh, the advice is, and this is something that uh, Tu Cuadro looks at very carefully, are Lutieres, the only ones which are in Venezuela that we are uh, trusting the delivery methods with uh, have to do with uh, well, Pedro Borrero, he offers certain cuatros that we are facilitating and uh, and those we have trialed and those have always arrived in the destination in time and uh, and in, in good condition and Alfonso Sandoval as well. Um, all of the other Lutieras are outside of Venezuela so they, there's no real issues with this kind of thing happening but if you are considering a... so we'll have a look at the hole again right there right over here and so if you are considering purchasing a cuatro from a luthier in Venezuela, keep in mind, one, the, the, the credibility, it, although it may be good, the amount of time that you're going to be waiting for the instrument, and also the, uh, the, the whole experience may not be all too great. Um, Venezuelans have a, a different kind of, well, not Venezuelans, luthiers who are Venezuelans, they are persons, or the, the typical one, imagine living in, in, the, in Los Llanos and... Well, you go, you sand a little bit one day, then you pick it up again, you sand a little bit the next, and so on and so forth. So it's the expectation should be set that it will take quite a significant amount of time before the instrument is actually uh, made to your specifications and brought to you. And the other thing is that there is a danger that it's always going to uh, go undergo the same kind of experience as this. And I was devastated when I, when I received this. I actually have an engraving on it for, uh, for a family member for my daughter you can see right over there <clears throat> and um, well it was supposed to be dedicated to her but I'm gonna have another one uh, which is dedicated to her which is gonna be in better condition so try to avoid going through a customer experience such as this and we at Tupuatro ensure that uh, all the Lutieres again that they are not only certified or that we have gone through the experience so we've lived it as a customer but the the, the actual quality of the instruments is phenomenal um, Let's let's get back to some quality aspects. Being, if you can see with this instrument, and it's easier to see because it has an, an inscription in it. You can see a crack right over here. When transporting these kinds of instruments, uh, there the argument is when they go through cold weather and that wood contracts and it expands, uh, then it may crack. And that is something which it's very likely that it happened. 
but it can be avoided. This happened to this instrument in particular because the fingerboard, the layer of the fingerboard, it's a different wood, which is more iconic to the instrument. It's rather thin. And when it's thin, then of course uh, there, there are going to be several, well, the, the, <clears throat> the risk of it cracking is going to be greater than one which is significantly thicker and, uh, and, and significantly more reinforced. And if I compare it to this instrument, the prefabricated one, the fingerboard, it's, it's a lot thicker than the previous one. It may not be all too evident here, but take my word for it. Uh, it's, it's a lot thicker and it's, uh, it, it can take a lot more wear and tear. So keep that in mind when you're also receiving uh, an instrument. Mm. This one in particular, it, it has been through cold weather. It, um, it is also something which uh, was transported on board on a plane. This was brought to me, so keep that in mind as well. If you know somebody who is going to be going to the location where you're considering purchasing your instrument, then you're better off trying to see if that individual is going to be bringing it with them than having it in a cargo hold of a plane. So keep that in mind. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to, to mention about these instruments, um, when you have them, and if something does happen to them, so if they do need to be repaired for whatever kind of a reason, then do let us know. Our luthieras are not only fabricators of instruments, but they can also uh, they can also repair them. So keep keep that in mind. Uh, it happens to everybody. It happens to the best of us, and it's uh, it's something which is a it's rather a shame to for it to happen. We recently had some sent to to Canada, which were damaged in the process because of the uh, the the cold temperature but um but those were repaired uh and it's it's something which it's it's good to know just in case something does happen um be mindful of uh certain companies that are trying to sell cuatros and we've come across a few on uh, on Amazon that uh, they they may be selling a cuatro it is a cuatro but it's been fabricated by ukulele um a ukulele known uh, fabricator of instruments and <clears throat> there are there are differences there are differences in the acoustics that's why this instrument will never sound like a ukulele it can be tuned by one but it won't sound like one similarly like a, if you grab a guitar it also sounds completely different so be mindful of that um, that the, the the specifics which under which the instrument has been fabricated has been done by somebody who is in fact a cuatro uh, luthier and not somebody who's trying to transfer their skills from one instrument to another. There are certain ones which are able to do that, but there are, there are not, uh, not all too many in the world. So <clears throat> there you have it. Keep in mind these kinds of things when purchasing music instruments and uh, make sure that you have a good experience when you're going to be purchasing them. There's nothing worse than having a poor experience after spending uh, quite a significant amount of money. Uh, speaking about money, I will give a slight comparison between these instruments and what is a fair price. This one was 250 euros. It's a fair price for a cuatro that came along with the case, a hard case as well, mind you. Um, it's uh, it's it's good quality. It's not of the, made of the best materials, but it's it's made of a good solid wood, a good known wood, so the rosewood, and uh, it it has some some great details to it as well. And acoustics are fantastic. So 250 euros is is a good price. For a quality, uh, a good quality cuatro, which has been fabricated. Other ones constructed by Lutieres, ones by Jose Guarito, like this one in particular, it was uh, 500 euros. It's it can be considered as quite a chunk of change. However, uh, you can't argue with the quality of the instrument, and considering that, well, you're going to have a lot of fun with this one for many years to come, and it's worth every penny. Um, you can also purchase some electric cuatros, which are you know, do have their price ranges. Everything for a luthier um, between 400 and some go even up to $1,200. That is the range that you should be looking for depending upon the kind of wood, the, the amount of frets, um, if there are any specifications, if you want an engraving, the, the, these kinds of things. So if you do have questions about it, if you're uncertain, just ask us. Don't, don't hesitate to contact us. We'll be more than happy to, uh, to help you source your cuatro and, uh, and ensure that you have a good, 